the real estate market is hopping right now. We're starting to see bidding wars. I'm gonna give you seven tips of how to win your dream home in a bidding war, and only one of them has to do with increasing your purchase price. So stay tuned. How to win a house during a bidding war. Number seven, prepare for battle. Have your pre-approval ready. This is not just a realtor technique to try to keep them from wasting time on you. It is absolutely necessary to have your pre-approval because you're going to fall in love with a house, most likely on a Friday evening. There's going to be a line standing outside to get in. Everybody else has their pre-approvals and you still have to try to scramble on a Saturday morning or a Friday night to try to find a lender that will be able to give you a pre-approval in time that we can attach it to your offer. And then you're going to wish you had have gotten it. So that is the number one reason. There's many reasons, but that is the number one reason I say prepare for battle. Get your pre-approval in advance. Besides, when you make an offer, it, it falls on the table with a thump when it comes with a pre-approval laying on top of it from a reputable lender. Number six, strike first. Be the first one there. Be watching your emails that come from your real estate agent to see the homes as soon as they hit the market. And when they hit the market, do what you got to do to go be there and see it. So coupled with number seven, have your pre-approval ready. Also be ready, willing, and able to show up. Be there first. Strike first. Be the first one to send in the offer. That first offer that comes in may be the most attractive to them because they're all risking it. They're all putting it on the line and wondering what the first person is going to say. Let your offer be the first compliment that comes to them. Thursday and Friday shopping. That's what I recommend. Go on Thursday and Friday. Now, sometimes these sellers aren't actually posting the homes until Saturday morning, but a lot of times the agents will strategically place them on Thursday and Friday. Go on those days. Like I said, this is back to strike first, be first. You may be able to negotiate, counter negotiate, and then ratify the contract before the other people even get started. If you can ratify that contract by Friday night before the lines start the next day, So I recommend trying to avoid the bidding war to begin with by getting in first, striking first, getting the first offer in and getting it ratified before everybody else starts setting appointments. As soon as all those appointments start coming in, the seller is going to start feeling confident that they're going to have a bidding war and they're going to ask for you to wait a little bit longer on their counter offer. So if you can strike first, get in there on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, and try to get it ratified, meaning be reasonable and flexible, doesn't mean you're going to get a huge deal right now. Our market simply will not allow it, at least not where we are. Make your offer attractive enough that they are willing to accept it rather than risk it and go into the weekend for something better. Number five. Large EMDs are not customary in our market here in South Carolina. We typically will do a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar earnest money deposit. That's quite common and customary that really any house up to four or five hundred dollars, um, a twenty five hundred dollar EMD will be enough. In this type of market, it is possible that your earnest money deposit or skin in the game that you're offering could be the difference between one offer looking like they're serious and the other offer looking like they're not as serious. If you're offering a $5,000 EMD earnest money deposit and the other person is offering $1,000, it says, I love it, I want it, I'm serious, and if I back out, you're going to get paid a bigger chunk. So that is a more attractive offer. Now talk to your real estate agent about your contingencies and how you might be able to get that earnest money deposit back. Understand that deposit is paid back to you 
to cover your closing costs. So it's not a loss if you close on your loan. Number four, less contingencies. There is more to an offer than the amount. It is the contingencies. It doesn't matter if you offered a million dollars over asking price. If you are in a due diligence contract and the person simply decides to walk, there's nothing the seller can do about it. A due diligence offers the most amount of protection towards the buyer, the least amount of protection towards the seller. It gives them the unilateral right to walk away from a contract because they simply decide not to buy it. Now, this is common in a buyer market, and I will most of the time try to get a due diligence uh, period of a week or two for my buyer. It offers them the most protection. But understand that a seller and a seller's agent is not going to see a due diligence option or a due diligence contingency on the offer as an attractive deal. So if two offers come in for the exact same amount, one has a repair request or an as-is, and the other one is a due diligence period, they are not going to choose the due diligence period based on that fact, or at least they shouldn't. So consider a different type of contingency. Again, speak with your realtor about this. A repair request contingency allows you to get, have a certain amount of time for inspections, and if you were to request reasonable repairs, it offers a chance a couple of days for the seller to determine whether they want to continue to have repairs done and continue in the contract or simply decline and allow you out with your earnest money deposit. A repair request is more attractive than a due diligence. Now, that being said, the other option is an as-is, the most attractive to any seller. The as-is says that you're getting in and that you can't get out unless there is something else, some other contingency written in. If you Maybe a financing contingency or a CL100 contingency. But when it comes to repairs, you're saying, I don't want an inspection. I don't want any repairs. I'm going to continue. You can count on me. That is the most attractive. But understand, it is also the scariest way for a uh, buyer agent and for the buyer because you're just hoping that there's no trouble up underneath. So if you do this, if you're on a slab and it's got a brand new roof and you know home's pretty good and you're pretty handy, then take the risk and go with an as is. If you're in a bidding war and you want to be different and you don't have any more money to offer, offer an as is. But again, talk to your realtor about that to see if that's going to be best for you. Know what type of loan that you are making your offer with. Cash is king, and anything less is going to come with some type of issue. Now, conventional loan is the best loan. It is what is the most attractive to a seller. It has the least amount of requirements. It says you have fantastic credit and that you're putting at least 5% down. So that is an attractive part of your offer. If you're using an FHA loan, which is a good loan, a government insured loan or you're using a VA loan that's a fantastic loan too especially for the fact that it, it is serving our veterans but understand that those types of loans such as the VA loan has specific requirements through inspections and CO100 that may not make the loan look as attractive to the seller not because of the person the people are great the buyers are great with these loans but because it may require them to repair things that they know that are wrong. But with that said, your type of loan may make you need to adjust your offer just slightly to offset, being aware that the type of loan or lending that you're receiving may offer other complications to the seller and you're going to offer something different in order to offset that inconvenience. So number two, the reason you probably watched the video is should I offer over asking price? Now, I will tell you that the most important thing is to speak with your realtor about that, okay? They've seen many transactions and they're going to be able to help you uh, to determine what you need to do in this situation. I honestly hate going over ask. It is a misunderstanding that realtors want you to go over ask because it pays them more money. If you do the math... It's a bigger headache than it ever is a padding in the wallet. 
So we would rather not do that. We'd rather get you a fantastic deal so that you run out there and tell your friends that we were the heroes. We would rather a referral than a little bit more on our paycheck that you end up not feeling great about. So understand we're on your side and we want you to get a fantastic deal. But one thing we also want is for you to win. That is the most important thing right now is that you're wanting to win that house. If you're wanting to go back and forth and negotiate over a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars and you could actually lose the house while you're counter offering to somebody else that wants to come in with a full ask or over ask, you are going to be kicking yourself for years. If we want to do some sharp negotiating, we're going to have to wait a decade or so because right now we're in a seller's market. We just have too short of inventory. So win the house, do what's necessary, pay a little extra if you have to. If you have multiple offers, go ahead and actually give your highest and best. But listen to your realtor. Another thing that you can do is an escalation clause. An escalation clause, at least here in South Carolina, you can add an escalation clause that's similar to how the highest or highest bid acts on eBay. Is that when another person bids, your bid will shoot up on top of it by X amount, and then you can put a limiting number, uh, the highest. I won't go over this amount. So talk to your real estate agent about using an escalation clause if you want that home. Number one way to win a bidding war and get the house that you dream of is to hire the right realtor and trust them. This is not a pitch for you, a pitch for you to hire me. Trust your current realtor. They have seen more transactions than you. Maybe you've bought four or five houses. Maybe you've bought 10 houses. But understand that that person, that person probably did that many transactions in the last few months. They've probably seen 100 transactions or more. They've seen a lot of goods and bads. They've seen transactions fall apart. They've seen lawsuits. They've heard stories. It's all they do. We eat, sleep, and drink. Okay, some people drink more than they should, but real estate, all right? So it's important that you trust your real estate agent when you ask questions like, hey, what do you suggest? Should I go over ask? Should I go with this certain type of, of lender? What contingency? I can live without this contingency. What's the best thing to put on, uh, on this contract? Hire the best realtor that you know and trust them. And good luck, guys. I mean... Honestly, it's an exciting market for everybody. You're buying a dream home. Maybe you're upgrading. You know, you got approved for a loan. You've got a great realtor and you found your house that you really want. This is an exciting time. Maybe you've lost out on a couple of houses so far because you've been outbid. Oh, well, it's very possible that those houses just weren't supposed to happen for you. It's going to be the next one. But I recommend being ready. Don't miss your next one. Okay, that's why you found this video is because you didn't want it to happen again to you. So I'm telling you right now, don't do something that you're going to regret. Get that house, ask your realtor how to do it.